Welcome back to another episode of Unlicensed Therapy with me, your host, Ari Manis. First things first, I'm going to review, I'm going to read the reviews for the podcast this week on Apple Podcasts. First one is from Nickname Took Forever via Apple Podcasts. Five stars. Amy Miller. Amy Pod was killer. Just joined Who's Your God podcast. You two have amazing chemistry. There for sure should be an Ari and Amy podcast. Thank you so much for that review. And now for the second one, this is from Ultra Boost underscore fan. Five stars, too good to be unlicensed. I want a woman with the sense of humor of Ari Manis. That would be a dream come true. Wow. Thank you so much for the ego boost. That is nice. Everyone else, leave your Apple podcast reviews and I will read them. I will also start to read my favorite YouTube comments. So comment below on or on YouTube if you haven't already. Today's guest, Tim. Great guy, hilarious guy, entertaining guy. I didn't know him. Someone on live said, you need to get Tim on your podcast. I said, I would love to, but he's too famous. He's not going to agree to do my podcast. DM'd him anyway, went for it, went big. He responded. He said, yeah, I'm down to do it. He came in, such a nice guy, brought me a donut. Talk to me, hung out with me. It was awesome. I hope you guys enjoy it. So check out today's episode. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you have a way harder time getting through life than the average person, Ari. I, I don't know why anybody would listen to this. I know. Your advice single-handedly broke up my marriage. You're an awful person. You're 24 years old. Why would I listen to you? Why would you be giving therapy and advice to people who clearly need it? It doesn't make any sense, Ari. This is a horrible idea. You're listening to you listening to unlicensed 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 therapy with Ari Mendes. Ari Mendes. Here, I gotta start. You know. Not sounding like such a no, dude. Such a privileged white guy. <laughs> the, the, I'm trying to fit into other circles. No amount of fams is gonna take that away. <laughs> so you might as well embrace it. Fam, what up, fam? <laughs> you were on Wild and Out for a bunch of years. I was, I was, I so, am. So you you get a card in any circle. I feel like not well, not every card. Wild and Out is beloved in every race, every group of people. People enjoy Wild and Out. Yeah, 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 yeah. People That's love it. Wild and Out. It was a good time. It it's fun. a classic show. You, you know, it's just... I a, haven't watched it in years, if I'm being honest. But every time I do, I get a smile on my face. You, well, I was actually... Are we going already? We're recording. Oh, shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was actually on the uh, the reboot of Wild and Out, you know, because uh, right. it, it was on way, way back, right? Um, but at this point, I feel like they might even all blend together because there's so many seasons of Wild Out. You could just say I'm on Wild and Out. You don't even need to say the reboot. Well, part. that's what's interesting, right, is because um, the s first season I did... As a reboot, came back, came out in like 2013, and that's damn, that's like eight years ago. Yeah, and so, it's still going. It's still My going. My friend uh, Brent Pella, okay. do you know him? He makes a bunch of sketches, funny guy. Mm. He is uh, leaving town, I think right now. He's shooting a the next season of Wild Now. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's like the newest guy on it. Out here. Oh, really? Good for yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, they're doing a whole bubble situation this, yeah. this year. Yeah. I thought we'd be able to avoid the bubble. It seems like everything... Is opening back up. I thought things were, you know, things are opening back up. And like, um, you know, normally the shoots out here, it's like everyone just, they just kind of test you right beforehand. It's like, all right, cool, let's do it. But they're switching it all up. They got a whole little wild and out bubble. And that's, they, they asked me to come back again uh, as a cast member. Um, and I said, nah, I'm cool. But, and then they asked me if I wanted to pop in for a few episodes. But and I and I thought about it because I, I did that last season. But uh -huh. the thing about it is, if I was to pop in uh, for a few episodes this season, I I would still have to bubble quarantine for a few days. Uh, and, so it's uh, like you might as well be a cast member at that yeah, point. Yeah, I just don't feel like bubbling, you know. Especially since I got this new baby, I don't want to be away from the oh, baby. Oh, congratulations! Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't want to be away from the baby for that long when it's so small, you know. So. You must be killing it if you rejected Wild and Out for two seasons in a row. What do you what What do you have going on that you're like? You know what? I'd rather be doing this 
then wild and out. Well, you know, part of it was that like I had already done a whole video about like, yeah, me and Wild and Out broke up and you know, I feel like everything happens for a reason and the universe and this and this and that. So I would have felt stupid if I'm like, okay, hey guys, I'm back. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. After this whole announcement. <laughs> And so that was part of the reason why I never went back. And and, and plus, um, yeah, you know, things are going well. It's cool. Um, I I ended up on a new MTV show called Deliciousness, which is a spinoff of Ridiculousness. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because I know people love seeing more ridiculousness on MTV. (laughs) And when you have a hit, you got to go. I'm surprised they're not Wild and Out spinoffs. Or is there? No, there isn't. Uh, Not yet. Not yet. But uh, yeah, so I'm on this Deliciousness, which is like... uh, it's it's ridiculousness, but it's food clips and all the people on the on like the, the couch are like foodies. I do a lot of like food mm-hmm. content too. Um it's actually hosted. Donuts. Oh yeah, I brought yeah. you donuts <laughs> because I feel bad for flaking on you two weeks ago now, on accident. Are, are these special donuts or are these from Ralph's? These are baked by my wife. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna get a paper towel and eat it right now. Yeah, do it right now, bro. Do it. You wanna eat one with me or you already have one? No, 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 no. You you that's all you. I've already had a couple. <laughs> This is this is from your wife right here. These are from my wife. Oh, I'm gonna feel nervous if they're bad. Get it? Get I, it? I already know they're not gonna be get bad. Get it? Look how moist they are, bro. They're so moist. <laughs> <laughs> this it. is moister than yeah a lady's vaginal canal. Is it? Most of them. When I'm with them. How's that? That's good. It's actually a Krispy Kreme. I was lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are from Krispy Kreme. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure your wife makes good donuts too. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we ordered a dozen Krispy Kreme yesterday. I was like, I'm gonna bring this dude some donuts. They're in a bag. They're all they're like, <laughs> how could they be from Krispy Kreme? They're not in a Krispy Kreme box. Yeah, I was like, if y'all don't know, I actually uh, I had a whole misunderstanding. I was supposed to be on here like two weeks ago, but I got my my schedule jumbled. I like double booked, and it was a whole misunderstanding. You're a busy man, but I'm here now. I'm you bo- have I'm one blessed. and a half million followers. On Instagram. Yeah, I do. I do. It's fun. It's, it's a blessing. It's cool. Do you get recognized on the street multiple times a day? Um, How often? It depends on where I'm at. You know, if I'm, if I'm surprisingly, you know, if I'm kind of out like uh, downtown LA, I get a lot of love, uh, like Koreatown, of, of course. Um, You're Korean. Huh? No, I'm Thai. But, Thai. you know, it's just like a, it's just like an Asian connection. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, busy cities, I say, I, I I do get stopped a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to open up. Do you know who Jimmy O Yang is? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I used to open up for him sometimes, stand up, mm-hmm. and we do like in Irvine. He was a <laughs> rock star. Oh, of course. He was like holy shit. He this. There's no one that could get recognized. As much as this. So let me tell you, I, I, I would, so I do a food show called Send Foods with my comedian homie David So, and um, it's, we, do, we go to some food festivals and we just eat and get drunk and talk shit, and, um, but, but our uh, supporters keep telling us to go to like this Filipino festival, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, or, and also or like an Asian food festival in like the 626 area too, and I'm like, bro, we can't do an Asian festival because we we won't be able to shoot it. We'll get we'll just <laughs> get mobbed. Too much. Yeah, and I always like But that I, could be fun. It's like that party vibe <laughs> just rock star life. Yeah, I mean it, it would look cool for sure, but Or you bring a group of bouncers <laughs> or security guards. You just have your own bodyguards. Just to mush surround. everybody's yeah. face. Back up. I always uh, tell people if I if I want to have like a nice like quiet dinner out with my wife, we have to go to the rich white people areas because like Asian people like Asian areas, I, I can't really just go to like a, a dinner like that. And also like you know um, just from making YouTube videos for so long and while and out, like um, I have a pretty decent diverse fan group but the old whites have no idea who I am. <laughs> the old whites don't know what's going on in the whole world. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Does your wife? like the fact that you are a public figure or does she is she sick of it she's like ah uh you know i I wouldn't say she likes it i wouldn't say she's sick of it um i've always kind of been been doing this type of stuff since uh when we met so Mm -hmm. she's used to it you know she understands it's kind of just it comes with it you know Mm -hmm. um she's never like a bitch about it there was only ever one time where she 
um, stopped me from interacting uh, with a fan on the street. And it was, uh, I remember we were in Toronto and she it was like hot and she was on her period. She was cramping. She, was, <laughs> she had to pee. She was hungry. And we were like walking down the street and I saw just this mob of young Asian dudes and I was like, oh shit. I saw their eyes kind of perk up and I was like, oh shit. She squeezed my hand. And as we're walking towards them, um, they're like, <gasps> and I'm like, nope, she's on her period. We gotta go. She has to pee. And then they're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. That's the only time because I knew she, just, she wasn't in the mood, you know? There's just one group of Asians in, you said Canada? <laughs> yeah, it was Toronto. Yeah. yeah, in Toronto that just thinks you're a dick. But besides <laughs> that, you're a nice guy. <laughs> they get it. They know. They know. That's the weird thing about, and whatever, being a public figure is if someone catches you on a bad day, now you're an asshole to that person for I know. the rest, you rest know? of your life. Even though you're a nice guy, but you can catch that one person, the internet. Dude, and I had to learn that lesson a long time ago because I, I had to learn that not only can you not be in a bad mood, but you can't even be in a calm mood because people will take that the wrong way, you know? Weird. I just, was, if you're just chill, they're if like, you're oh, chilling. he's kind of a dick. Yeah, because like... You know, they expect you to kind of be, especially, I guess, in my in my videos and just in my, like, when you see me on TV or whatever, I, you know, it's energy's on 10, you know? Mm -hmm. In real life, I'm chilling, right? So I did, like, a little meet and greet uh, years ago in San Diego. and My um, hometown. Oh, word. Mm -hmm. I love San Diego. It's best. So I was out there. It, it was probably, like, UCSD. I had a little, like, it was, like, a little, just a, little, a meet and greet type thing. UCSD. A lot of Asians at UCSD. A lot of Asians. Shout out to UCSD. Mm -hmm. and, Good school. Hard and, school to get into. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember going through the whole thing and feeling like, okay, that was great. Everybody was cool. Uh, it was a solid meet and greet. And then after that, uh, a friend of mine who knew a guy that went to the meet and greet who didn't know that she knew me. Was like, yeah, I went to that little like that the, that meet and greet or whatever with Tim and um, and she was like, oh, how was it? And he's like, oh, he was kind of a dick. And she was like, why? And he goes, he just had a vibe. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I literally hugged everybody. I shook every hand. I took every picture. I thought I was being so nice. So now when I'm interacting with people, I'm like, I'm, I try to like. Yeah, you're like a jolly yeah. Santa Claus type. I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? No, it's so dope. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, good to meet you for sure. It's more fun to say to someone that guy was a dick than to be like, oh, yeah, he was chill. It's more fun to go, oh, I met that guy once. He yeah. sucked. Yeah, yeah. He was an asshole. Yeah. For the rest of their lives, we're going to say that, you know. <laughs> and I got to remember that, too. It's like, for me, you know, it's, it's, it's two seconds out of my day but this person is either gonna go the rest of life saying i'm an asshole or being like oh man you know what tim was, tim was really nice i know for certain you're a nice guy without even knowing you <laughs> because you're doing my shitty podcast <laughs> so that's how you know tim's a really nice guy if Dude. he's coming here on his day off <laughs> to this shithole that's a nice guy well you know what man it's like Here's what I do, you know, I, mm. I always just kind of go through my DMs, uh, my, my requests, just to see, like, if there's any uh, business or people, like, reaching out type situation, and um, you told you asked me to be on your podcast, and I, I have a podcast, so I know how difficult it is to get guests sometimes, you yeah. know, you want guests, because people are like, oh, I got another podcast, right? Right. Um, but, like, you know, um, I saw that, you know, you're a comedian, and you had people that I knew had been on it already, mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, you're verified, so that helps. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yes, it paid off. <laughs> Verification. Now we're here, dude. Today's episode of Unlicensed Therapy is brought to you by Happy Dance. Whether you've tried CBD before or maybe you haven't, you should know that Happy Dance is different. It's a great product, and it's brought to you by Kristen Bell. You know the famous movie star? The beautiful actress that was on Rick Glassman's podcast? How did he get her to do his podcast? Will you do my podcast, Kristen? Either way, big fan of Happy Dance and you. Happy Dance is a great product. It's like rubbing a little bit of, it's going to be okay, right on your skin. It's good. It takes me to my happy place. They have the whipped body butter. They have the bath bomb my personal favorite because i like taking baths especially on the road i bring this little box with me pop a little bath bomb in the tub and oh boy i feel good and they have coconut melt they have a whole sort of products and they're really good and right now my listeners that's you guys can go to doahappydance.com slash ari to get 15 percent off of your first happy dance order that's 15% off your first order of Happy Dance CBD skincare at doahappydance.com slash Ari. I personally use Happy Dance, again, mostly on the road in the bath. 
But sometimes I'll take a shower and I'll rub it on my body and I'll just make myself feel all smooth and nice. And it really is nice. I've turned a few friends onto this product. Even my uh, engineers here at the podcast studio have gotten some for themselves. And we all agree it is a great way to start or end the day by rubbing some happy dance all over yourself. Check it out at doahappydance.com slash Ari for 15% off of your first order. Let me know in the comments how you guys like it because I really like it and I think you will too, so let me know. All right, back to the show. I've been trying to get my wife verified for years and I know people at Instagram, <laughs> mm-hmm. but there's it's still it's a still process, hard. bro. It's so difficult. What is your what does your wife do? Um, I mean now, you know, so uh she Besides uh give Krispy Kreme. Besides, uh, to... besides bake Krispy Kreme level donuts, she um you know, she blogs and um she's like a big part of uh my content now, mm-hmm. just online and stuff. Um uh, she is a, uh, you know, a mom <laughs> and, uh, like a, a beauty personality situation, you know, she's, she's a lot more low key than I am, but, uh, she has a following kind of like residual following cause of mm-hmm. me, you know? And so I've been trying to get her that check mark, man, but it's, a, it's, it's, it'll like, come, it'll come. She's just got to post skimpy pics, get the attention. <sighs> man, I've been trying to get her yeah. for the longest time. <laughs> is there anything that you're changed that has changed in your content since you've had a child? <clears throat> yeah, bro. Cause I'm- I do a lot of like inappropriate things that I feel like I already question. <laughs> Well, for one, I am exploiting the shit out of my baby, because <laughs> <laughs> it gets it gets the likes and the engagement sure. way up. They're pe- cute. Babies people, are oh, cute, man. especially Asian babies. Oh, those dude. are the cutest of the babies. Hundred percent. Mine. So my baby is uh, half Thai, a quarter Salvadorian, and a quarter Eritrean, which is like East African. Which Haven't like, even seen that baby. I already know it's the cutest baby. Oh man, she is the <laughs> cutest baby. Um, and uh, so I, you know, I we kind of debated like. You know, do we want to post our baby all the time, or do we kind of want to keep it more private? But I was like, man, this baby's so fucking cute. I want to show it to the world, and then we can't deprive the world of this. I, I, I can't. Like, who am I to deprive yeah. my baby, deprive the world of my adorable baby? You know. But for sure, like, you know, it's like it gets so many likes, and like, mm-hmm. um, and so um, I'm showing the baby a lot. Um, but in terms of what I'm doing, has it changed up? I mean, kind of, because like. You know, I was spending so much time trying to crank out just, like, entertaining shit on Instagram and YouTube or whatever. And then I had the baby and everything kind of, like, paused. And now I'm just really just, like, posting baby shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the other day, uh, we, we we took, like, a little Airbnb trip to Palm Springs with some friends. And um, our photographer, uh, comedian homie, took some adorable pictures, right? And I was posting them. I'm like, all right, guys, I've done the full transformation. I am officially family-friendly brand friendly content now <laughs> and then like a week later I, I posted just like my ass like skinny dipping <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah I saw that video you're just like yeah yeah people were like ah, you were family friendly for two days and that was it mm. well you had a good run you had yeah. a good family family you know child services will be coming soon <laughs> yeah. say goodbye yeah I love what I follow this is like the creepiest thing about me probably but I follow a bunch of baby accounts on TikTok of just people like messing with their babies and it's so <laughs> cute and funny dude it's so like there's so many there's so much shit you can do to your baby too like things <laughs> I haven't done yet like the like have you seen the challenges where they put like they stack cereal on the baby's forehead no I so it's like while your, ba- while your baby's asleep the goal is to see how many Cheerios you can pop, you can stack on the baby's forehead, and it's like a whole thing. I have yet to do that or any of the other challenges, like you know where they where they will just throw like a slab of craft cheese on the baby and make it stick to the baby's oh, face. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, and then they start crying a lot of the times, but it's still funny. it's so funny though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they man. cry for no reason. They just don't. They're so confused. They're just like, ah. <laughs> I'll wait till she can at least hold her head up a little bit, and then I'll start doing it. How shit. old? She's about four months now. Oh yeah, real young. She's okay. tiny. No, no babies for You're you. You're tiny. I am a tiny man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so your baby is gonna be super tiny. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I recently got a girl I'm seeing, mm-hmm. but I don't know if I want a baby. I think I'm too selfish with my time. No, I feel that, bro. Like I love. Same thing with dogs. I love dogs, but I don't know if I want one because dogs are like babies forever. Yeah. They never like. Like, stop shitting themselves. You know what I'm saying? You got to clean up shit uh, at least once a day. You got to take it for multiple walks. You got to feed it multiple times. Mm-hmm. You got to bathe it. Mm-hmm. You got to, if you leave town, you got to find someone to take care of it. You literally can't even leave it alone. It's, uh, 
it's all yeah they they need your attention they need your love i have a pet snake whoa and the beauty of the snake is or at least my snake it's friendly when i want to hold it mm-hmm. cool she, she's chill and i this, could leave it alone for a month this isn't innuendo right now you have you literally <laughs> no, have, I have oh, an okay, actual <laughs> pet western hognose snake to accompany my cock but uh, <laughs> but i have a pet western hognose snake and i could leave it alone for a month mm-hmm. and it does not give a shit I don't have to feel think. Oh no! Is can someone take care of my snake? No, it's chill. You should get a cat. Cat would be the next step. I don't like the way they smell. I've never been a cat guy. Really, man, yeah. cats are so chill. They are chill. They're and, cool, and they also don't care if you leave them alone. They don't give so, a shit. Yeah, so there is. I and they're cute. I see. I like kittens. Kittens are cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it gets to be a cat. I don't know, something about Bro, it. Bro, that's when they're extra like, that's when they're like, yo, I don't give a fuck, man. Do whatever you want. Just like leave me some like. Do you have cats? I don't, but like, I just love cats. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I like animals. I've never actually had a pet, but I love animals, you know? Uh, never a pet in your whole life. I've no never dog, had no cat, no reptile, no nothing. Nothing. And I just dove right into yeah, right like. Yeah, right in a baby. Baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is like zero to 100. Maybe you know? it's good. Maybe if you had a dog, you would have been like, you know what? I don't think we should have a baby. This <laughs> yeah, I is, can't handle this. This is a lot. <laughs> yeah, but babies are cool, man. Like, uh, you really, you don't think, you know, I, we were never people who were like, yo, we got to have a baby. Like, I can't wait to have kids. Like, I was never that guy. Like, I was kind of, it was in the back of my mind. Like, yeah, I'd like to have kids one day, mm-hmm. probably. And then um, when it came time, we're like, yeah, maybe we maybe we should maybe let's have a baby and then uh we had the baby and i'm like and it's fucking fun bro like they like do you like so i love just like poop and talking about poop and i think it's the funniest shit (laughs) no dude if a girl farts in front of me it's over oh you're one of those (laughs) (laughs) well i always tell because people always ask me how did you know that your wife was like the one and one of the things that like tipped me off to just how her being like a special person like the first night we ever spent together like after we like smashed and stuff, I was like, <laughs> "Wait, I, the first you smashed on night one?" No, no, I'm saying the first night we like oh, spent. The it night, was a whole yeah. thing. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, "All right, well, uh, nothing I'm, wrong with smash on night yeah, one." Yeah, no, by that's the way. totally your yeah. preference. If you want to do that, it's yeah, all good. Yeah. No judgment at all. Yeah, like yeah. I've done that plenty of times yeah. as well. Um, and <laughs> it's like, and after after we 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 did our thing, I was like, "All right, well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a shit and shower." And she was like, "Okay." And the fact that she wasn't like, "Oh my god, too much information," <laughs> right, right, right. or was like, eh, or like cracked up, I was like. This chick is cool. And that's, <laughs> that's how I knew. You knew. <laughs> I knew it was like, she's different, bro. She's operating on a, on a different wavelength, you know? Yeah, she just leaned over and farted on you, and you're like, this is the one. This is the one. This she is like the one lit out like a quiet one on my thigh while we're cuddling. I was like, yo, this is the one. Sometimes but, I let out those quiet ones. Because everyone, I know, I everyone farts. I know girls fart. I just don't want to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes I'll be cuddling with a girl, spooning. <laughs> And I fart softly, and in my head, I'm like, did she notice that? Do you, like, do the, like, open up your ass cheeks to make sure it comes out quietly? I, did, I didn't even know that. If you oh. open up your ass cheeks, it comes out quieter? Yeah, bro, because the, the, the fart noise is just, the, like, the clapping of your cheeks. You know what I'm saying? It's like, the, it's like this. Like, if you do this, like, <laughs> that, that's your tongue and your lips. But if you just go, <sighs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, so if you, I'm like. I'm 31 years old and learning <laughs> that if I spread open my ass, farts come out silently. Spread open your ass and just try to relax your asshole, and it'll just kind of whoosh out. Wow. Yeah, bro. I'm say I'm saving you a this lot of. This like, podcast is worth it all for that, <laughs> for, that for that fact that I've learned. like for sure. I've done that where I'm like, ah, oh, I don't, I don't want to fart. Like I'm, I'm like, I don't want to fart around like loud. So I just kind of like, just, like just lift up and ask you, just let it, like wish out. <laughs> I can just picture you hanging in bed and just like inching it open. Yeah, man. That's, that's what you. Do. That's why I've been doing this whole time, this whole interview. <laughs> I think I grew up just like. You know, I never minded girls farting because, like, my mom was a big farter. Like, she, like, my whole family was, like, big farter energy. And she used to do a thing where she would, like, look at you and she would, like, put out, point a little gun finger and she'd go. And, Your like, mom did this? Yeah, she would fire the fart at you. That was not in your Wikipedia page, but uh, I'm going to add it to that. <laughs> Anybody could mess with your Wikipedia, and now that's going to be on there. His mom used to fart gun at him. I'm not mad. Right? I'm proud. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. It's a cool mom. My mom was a vegetarian and just bought purses. That's so, what she did? Yeah, she just likes buying tons of bags. Like high-end ones or just like... Just yeah, any- she spoils herself with oh, purses. Okay. okay. She's one of those ladies. Okay. I, I, even like a... She had like a Birkin, like the fucking like... Those are like $50,000 and shit. Okay, she might not spoil herself that much, <laughs> but I, she probably has a couple purses that are a few thousand dollars. Oh, damn. Not 50, 50,000. It's like you can get a Porsche. I Yeah, I remember... You know, I'm not really uh are you a big like uh designer guy? 
no, this is an <laughs> Amazon Basics T-shirt. <laughs> I feel, you know, I feel that because, like, I remember when I first started getting like just money, and I was like, and I kind of started buying shit, and I was like, I was like, and then after like a couple years, I'm like, oh man, what is the point of this, you know? And I was like, what did you spoil? <laughs> what was the first big money thing you bought where you're like, I'm I'm just gonna buy this dumb thing? Um, okay, so this is this is so so like funny and dumb, like. I was I was at the the the, the Beverly um, the Beverly Center right mm-hmm. with a couple of homies of mine and we the, the Beverly Center used to have a bar in the middle of it um, like in the bottom floor and uh, I hadn't seen these guys in in, like, in a while and we were just like we we're just getting drunk in the mall <laughs> and then um, one of my homies who loved just buying like Louis Vuitton like belts and like like, mm-hmm. little, little, like flashy clothes yeah little like flashy things he was like yo. He's like, yo, I'm drunk. He's like, let's go to the Louis store. I'm like, yeah, all right, fuck it. So we were all in the Louis store, walking around like obnoxious in the Louis Vuitton drunk. store. Drunk, <laughs> obnoxious, like looking at shit. And then like, you know, tr- like, you know, l- looking at like, oh, can I see this belt? Can I see this bag or whatever? And um, and I think, and, and also part of it was like, we knew the employees were looking at us like, oh, these drunk motherfuckers, they're not going to buy shit, right? So we were like, we're going to fucking buy some shit. So we each like, I don't know, some, it's like, I think I maybe bought like a, a belt and a little like, I don't know, like a fanny pack or some shit, like a little coin something. Yeah, right? but at Louis Vuitton, that's still $5,000 or something. <laughs> it, was, it was probably like, maybe like, I don't know, I probably spent like, you know, somewhere between 500 to a G, just on some, yeah, some yeah. frivolous shit, right? Yeah. And then they bring out like champagne for us and stuff because we're all like just being stupid and buying yeah. stuff. But then after all, you know, after like a couple years of doing that, it's like, ugh, what's the point? You know, I was leasing a, a Maserati for like a few years, mm-hmm. and um, and it was actually because it was like a super, it was like a really um, it was a deal. Like my dad sent me this deal on Facebook, and he was like, "Yo, Maseratis are really cheap to lease, actually." Yeah. And then um, so I did it. At and, least you leased it, didn't buy it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, fuck that. It was just kind of like you know after like, and then I was so I'm driving this Maserati for a few years, and it, it was a nice like flex because mm-hmm. you pull up and feel like oh shit, and then they don't know like secretly it's like it's a really good deal. <laughs> but then after I gave back the lease, I'm like, bro, what is the what was even the point? Who cares? And now especially that you're married and have a kid, it's like who am I trying to impress here? Yeah, yeah. man, it's just silly. You realize a belt is a belt. A belt is a belt. It's like even if I want people to see the belt, I either have to like you know like like tuck in my <laughs> shirt yeah, yeah. or like wear them really low, and I'm not doing either of those anymore. So when I was in college, I had this friend who was from Newport Beach, and he was her his parents were really he had a lot of money. Uh huh. And he gave me his old Gucci wallet, <laughs> and I took it because I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take the free Gucci wallet. Yeah. yeah. And I think maybe throughout years i got like two i and i used that thing till it fell apart yeah but i got two people who are like cool wallet and they <laughs> meant it but overall i probably got more people who was like who's this douche with a gucci wallet <laughs> <They're> <laughs> like, that's what i think he's like gucci wallet and he's wearing amazon shirts <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude when i see someone with a with a belt like a flashy belt with studs on it more often than not, if i don't know them yeah my instant assumption is like douche yeah yeah because you're judging them on like priorities and there's like mm-hmm. so much shit I, th- for the longest time bro like i wouldn't even wear sunglasses because every time i saw a guy wearing sunglasses i'm like oh man this guy looks douchey <laughs> yeah. and then and then i like would buy like designer sunglasses and i'd never wear them because i would feel like a douche if i put them on I'm like <laughs> i don't feel comfortable just wearing sunglasses but you know maybe that's just maybe i'm thinking too much probably we're probably all just <laughs> insecure little dweebs and who gives a shit we should just wear whatever we want to well, wear i mean there was a point too where i was like I don't want to, you know, like, I don't want to do, you know, okay, so I, there was also a point where I was, like, I was, I was leasing a, a, a little, like, a convertible, and I was, like, ah, oh, I was, like, man, I, I used what to, kind? it was a little, like, Audi, like, an A4, nice, convert- nice. it was beautiful, yeah. and um, I used to be, like, growing up, I was, like, oh, I would never get a convertible, feel so douchey, you know, just be cruising around with a convertible, and then I, I got older, and I was, like, you know what, I'm a little douchey, <laughs> so maybe I should embrace this I have a bit. man bun, let's yeah, just I, accept it. I mean, it's yeah. there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's this just, was even pre-man bun, you know? And I was like, you know what? The little douchiness is there. Let's ha- let's just fuck it. Let's Everyone has a little douchiness in some way, mm-hmm. in some fashion. You know what I mean? Like me, I don't like sharing hotel rooms on family vacations anymore. Okay. When I go on a vacation with my parents and brothers, I need my own room. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm I'm stuck up in that way. I mean, you've been yeah. you've been booked for all these gigs, and you got your own rooms. <laughs> That's <and> right. <laughs> yeah, I travel on the road now. These shows get me my own hotel room on family vacations. I'm not going unless I get my own room. You know, it just kind of happens. I think. You know, what I'm saying like, 
I remember taking a road trip to Vegas with with some friends, and one of my friends, he had just he was on like American Idol, and he had just come off like the American Idol tour, so he was mm-hmm. super like just bougie at the time. Well, I, th- <laughs> I felt like he was bougie, right? And I used to never valet my car, and we were going to Vegas, and I was parking in the like the regular structure, and he's like, "Don't you want to like valet so they can take our bags?" I was like, "Why would I pay somebody ten dollars yeah. when I can just t- take my own shit?" You know, until I started like valeting just because I'm like oh this is convenient yeah right and then and now it's like I'm like even if I'm going to like Target if they got a valet I'm valeting my <laughs> shit you valet every chance everywhere you get. bro I'm like pay somebody five bucks to park my shit hell yeah ball out but you need to have or you don't need to but for me I sometimes I feel dumb valeting like my old Prius <laughs> I think that's funny <laughs> it is, I guess that is funny. <laughs> you're like yeah treat it hey treat it nice I remember how many miles are on this thing no joy rides in my Prius <laughs> yeah bro I think I think that's a, that's a bit into itself you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that'd be it that'd be also a bit the other way if you're a valet guy and you stole someone's Prius to take a joy ride <laughs> That'd be pretty good. I, yeah, I think so. I think uh, you, you should do it. I'll do it. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to take full credit. I'm not giving you shit. I don't mind. <laughs> That's at the end of the joke. Shout out to Tim. <laughs> he valets his car every time. So wait, you're from San Diego? Yeah, from San Diego. I like that. Uh, you- I, re- I was born Chula Vista and then grew up in the Del Mar area, North County. Man, San Diego's nice. Oh, man. I would like, uh, you know, if I wasn't trying to be in this, like, Hollywood shit, trying to be an actor and shit, I would definitely, like, I wouldn't mind living in San Diego. Same here. A lot of people say, why would you move to L.A. from San Diego? And I, for two reasons, comedy, yeah. number one. But also, even though San Diego's the best, I literally don't have a single bad thing to say about it. Yeah. I wanted to leave home. I you know, you- I just didn't want to... I just don't want to live in the same place my whole life. Yeah, no, I feel that. And even probably, I'm sure I'll feel that way about L.A. too. I'm sure in 10 years I'll be like, you know what? I need to leave L.A. Sometimes you need a little change of pace. Mm-hmm. Mix it up. Mix it up. I mean, that's why you got to do a Airbnb trip to like, you know, I don't know, Lancaster or something. And I Airbnb my apartment too while I'm gone. Do you? To make the difference. And that way it's like basically free. Damn. To go move around. That's perfect. Mm-hmm. You never do that? Airbnb your house? Nah, I'm all, I'm too like I'm too just I don't you want, like your stuff. Too I don't much. want people in my shit. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I one time I came back and my whole apartment had been ransacked and robbed. For real? By the Airbnbers, yeah. Are you serious? It was crazy, dude. I got back from my and I'm like tired, you know, because yeah. I'm I was traveling. That's why I Airbnb it to begin with. Right. It was like a long ass travel day. I get back. I just want to like get in my own bed, you know. I open my doors. And the place, there's like stains on the walls. There's a body. My guitars are gone. My skateboards what? are gone. My gun is gone. I got my gun stolen. My camera equipment's gone. Oh my God. Just tr- not, it's, it's still things that I got robbed and the place is trashed. So you didn't have and like, I, like the I information to of these people? So I never actually met them because oh. they checked in when I left. So I didn't even have, you know, I just had their reservation. That's all the info I had. So they could have even stolen someone's identity to do it. Who oh, knows? I'm sure they got away with it. Damn. Luckily, I mean, it was a pain in the ass and not worth it and yeah. horrible. But Airbnb has a insurance. So I got everything paid for and stuff oh, and yeah. fixed. But that day I wanted to cry. It was just, I oh bet. my God, it was horrible. Shit. Yeah. No, nah, I mean, just the, uh, yeah, I've, I've been robbed, you know, like a, a couple times. So it's like, uh, you know, well, not, not like at like gunpoint, but like yeah, my same. house is, yeah. you know, broken into and stuff. So it's like, yeah, no, uh, it's definitely like you feel violated. 100%. You, f- you just like, wow, I can't believe this could just happen like that. Yeah. Who would do this? This is like my safe space. People suck. There's a lot of shitty people. In so that's, world, that's definitely yeah. Oh, for sure. So that's why I'm always like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know if I could Airbnb my spot. Like that's the horror story of it. I'm sure. already just worried about people like you know someone with like, that stinks being in my bed. And then, like, oh, that <laughs> happens <laughs> half the time. Yeah. yeah, no, I could never, bro. Oh, the one time. So this is different. So I also used to Airbnb. Not even where I lived. I had a whole another apartment that I would Airbnb just for money. I was mm. basically running like my own little hotel room, mm. studio apartment. Did it for like two years and it was paying okay. my whole rent. It was good. But th- now they changed the Airbnb laws, so I uh, couldn't do it anymore. Lame. But I was doing it in West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. You know, aren't you like, when you come back, aren't you afraid there's just like jizz everywhere? I mean, I, I have in my apartment now, because I still Airbnb it sometimes if I'm leaving for a long time and yeah. I want to, I'm cheap, whatever, I do it. Yeah. Not going to deny it. I do it. <laughs> but uh, I have a separate set of sheets that I just use for Airbnb. Oh, uh, okay. So I have my sheets, and then I have the Airbnb sheets. Yeah, that but makes yeah, sense. But yeah, for sure they have sex in the bed. Well, yeah, of course. But 
you know, the way I look at it, hey, I'll go sleep in a hotel room. How many people have fucked on that thing? Yeah, a lot. That's true, but then you like to think that it's like getting cleaned pretty good in between stays, yeah. even though it's probably not. I clean it pretty good in between my stays, and but yeah, you're right, it's probably not. And I think to myself, you know what, maybe they were a beautiful people and now I'm having sex where this beautiful woman True. was made love to. I mean, I know your place is clean. I was talking about yeah. the hotels probably oh, yeah. aren't as clean as we think they yeah, are. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Oh, I would not want to do a black light test. Oh, I saw, there was like a news story one time where they took a black light to a hotel room and there was like, there was just jizz everywhere. Oh, yeah. Even this last weekend, I was in Detroit and I get to the hotel room and there are five dead cockroaches on the floor. Ugh. And I, I straight up called... And said, hey, I need to move hotel. You need to give me a different room. Yeah. And I did, but it was nasty. Ugh. It was a nice hotel. It was like a four-star hotel. Really? Yeah, oh, dude. Was. Did you wake up feeling lazy? Oh, I'm just going to listen to another podcast before I start my day. Oh, I'm going to work out tomorrow because my back kind of hurts. That's not why. It's because you're lazy and you don't have a lot of energy because you touched yourself too much last night. At least that's me. That's, that's my life. But luckily... Luckily, I have found a fix for that, and it's liquid IV. It's two to three times more hydration than just regular water, and it's faster, and it has vitamin C, more vitamin C than an orange, in fact. I truly feel a night and day difference than when I just drink water and then when I have this. This gives me the motivation energy I need to go on more hikes, to lift more weights, to get more exercise in, to feel better, to get through a day. You can also get liquid IV either in bulk at Costco, at your local Costco, or you can get 25% off by going to liquidiv.com and using the promo code THERAPY at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order, and you get better hydration today using promo code THERAPY at liquidiv.com. I'm not just saying this. I am a big old lazy bones. I'm a big old lazy piece of shit. I never have the motivation to do a hard workout. I notice myself getting a little paunch belly. Not as of this month. As of this month, I've been using liquid IV, and it's given me the motivation to get myself out of bed earlier, to go on a longer hike, to do more pull-ups, to do more push-ups, to feel better about myself. And I want you guys to experience that too. So go to liquidiv.com, use the promo code THERAPY. It'll support the show by doing so. And more importantly, it'll support yourselves because you will feel better and you will work harder. Check out Liquid IV. You're going to thank me. Comment below if you've already checked it out or if you're going to check it out. All right. Thank you guys. Bye. You want to hear a story? Um, about like a bougie ass restaurant in Beverly Hills that I was eating at one time. Uh, I'm not gonna say the name, but it was like, it was one of these like known bougie restaurants, okay. right? Me and my boy were eating. We're like, let's treat ourselves to a nice little steak dinner tonight, right? And so we're there and we're eating. And then on the table next to me, I literally see like a little tiny cockroach crawling on the table. And I didn't want to make a big deal because you know, I, well, you know, this shit happens. You know, yeah. I get it. Yeah, cockroaches exist. They exist, yeah. and especially you know when you run a restaurant. Look, like. They're there sometimes. Sure. It's difficult to not have Yeah, I'm bugs. not the type to cause a scene. Yeah, yeah. me neither. Yeah. So, um, and my family had a Thai food restaurant for 20 years, so it's like, I get that shit happens, right? So I just kind of like, I waved like, I was like, hey, to a server, and I was like, hey, I just kind of like, hey, uh, over there, like a little, like, little nudge. And then he was like, he was like, oh, okay, he reached over, and then she, so he walks over quietly, and he just goes... And just like snatches it off the table <laughs> and then walks away. And then like two maybe barehanded. Like, yeah, barehanded. Wow. He literally just was like, oh, saw it. It was like it's almost bad. Slapped it off the table. Yeah. And then um like a minute later, a bus boy came and changed all the like everything. And then um the manager came out to me later. He's like, Hey, uh, we know you saw something and uh we you know we're gonna comp your whole meal, which, oh, was, wow. which was great. And it's a f- expensive meal. It too. was an expensive yeah. meal. So it was uh so that was that was nice. But that was, was a in, win. In my head, I'm thinking like they're so lucky. That I wasn't either like one of their either like bougie customers or one of their customers that's like, hey, I'm treating myself to like my first ever birthday at this restaurant. <laughs> Cause they would like, either way, it would have been a whole commotion. You know, they're what lucky saying? you're not a Yelp reviewer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You would, hey, you're so nice. You didn't even wanna say the name of the restaurant right now. Exactly. Well, I mean, because I still eat there. Yeah, I would hope that happens to me all the time if I, if they gave free stuff. I'd take a, <laughs> I'd take a cockroach for a free. Nice meal. Just take a little Ziploc bag yeah. full of cockroaches. They could fry it up, put it in my food if it's free. <laughs> I'll do it then. 
Your, wait, you said your family had a Thai restaurant? Yeah, for 20 years. Why'd they stop doing it? Um, you know, they were just getting old and um, they're getting tired and they were like, you know, let's let's just sell it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like the restaurant business is hard because it's it's like, it's just nine out of 10 restaurants fail, I think I read. Is that it? Yeah. Man, like it's 90%. just, it's so, it's just constant, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's really, um, unless you have just one of these restaurants is like super popping, it's very, it's really like the business is so up and down, you know? Yeah. So it's like one month shit's booming and the next month it's like oh okay we need help paying the bills you know so it was it was um you know I've, we were blessed to be able to do it for like 20 plus years but um i think they were just tired and uh yeah my dad more than my mom like my mom like that was like her baby you know so she was a little a little sad about letting it go but my dad was definitely ready and i and i, I had gotten to the point too where i was like you guys you guys don't need to work anymore like i can i can pay for your shit like you don't need to do this anymore it was more like a passion thing for my mom you know oh, so do you give money to your family that's pretty yeah, nice yeah yeah oh yeah, it's so yeah, nice yeah, to you yeah. i mean I, I told them i told them from the when I started just doing the entertainment shit, you know, I'm like, guys, I'm the, this is I'm doing this for me, but also it's for you, you know. Like if I if I can make this shit work, like you don't have to worry about. Were they supportive the whole time? You know, they they were um they were they were especially for like Asian parents yeah. who like are stereotypically That's what, exactly what, you know, what I was thinking. Right, because yeah. it's all you know, it's always like we're you know they're known for like, hey, you got to be a doctor, you got to get straight A's, this, this and that. Um, I guess they were entrepreneurs, so they kind of get it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and also they kind of, I mean, I think my parents knew from the beginning that I wasn't going to be like a doctor, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just kind of, not because I was dumb, like, but. listen, we saw your GPA. <laughs> We're just glad you found something that isn't. There's so, something yeah, yeah. That, that's kid putting food on the table. <laughs> yeah. Nah, but like, I, I was always, um, I loved like just being an entertainer. I was always like little goofy class clown, like musicals and, and drama and all that shit. So they knew where my heart was. And I told them from the beginning, like, hey, man, um. I'm going to get this degree and finish school for you guys, but then I'm just go and try to be famous, you know? And um, and they were all just kind of like, okay, yeah, yeah, do your things. Make sure you get your degree, get your education, blah, blah, blah. But they also, you know, were super supportive of everything. We're always at my, like, little musicals and my performances and all that. Um, and then I think when they started to see that it was potentially becoming something real, you mm -hmm. know, is where it kind of switched in their heads. I always tell people- What was the moment, like Wild and Out, or was it YouTube no, blowing I'll tell you up? Yeah. I think it was YouTube blowing up, because yeah. I always tell people this, like, um, all I think all parents kind of have stuff that they brag to their friends about. They just kind of choose the best things about you to brag to your friends. And uh, my, my parents would be sitting around with their old Thai friends and- I remember my dad used to be like, you know, oh, you know, my, my son, he's, he's majoring in this and this and that at, at, at Cal State Long Beach. And, you know, he, he also does these like little videos with his friends or whatever. And then and then one year I remember him being like, oh, you know, my my son's famous on YouTube. <laughs> and I was like, OK, OK, he gets it. it there's a switch. You know, <laughs> right, something right. happened. He understands that it's legit. And uh, a big part of that is like, you know, he would kind of see the 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 following I had and then he also was like he saw that oh wow this is like this is this, like there's money in this yeah you know and I think that's the change because my mom for a while she still be like you're you're gonna you're still gonna go back and get your degree right and I'm like mom do you want me to do you want me to finish school or do you want me to like keep paying for your shit yeah, and she's yeah. like and she's like okay 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 okay, okay never mind never mind do whatever you want, <laughs> yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> that's cool that's really cool that moment probably when you heard your dad say that you were like okay that's, yeah that's man nice. you know because uh, you know I, I like I said like I told him from the beginning like. Yeah, this seems silly, but uh, but it's gonna pay off. Did you have one video on YouTube? Do you like have, or was was it a slow, steady growth, or did you have one video where you're like, oh shit, it's on now? It, it was for sure a, a slow, steady growth. I didn't have like one video that went crazy viral. I had, I mean, I had a couple videos that went like low key viral. I mm -hmm. guess like the first video that actually made me kind of uh, get recognized at school. Um, I, and when you say school, you mean Long Cal State Long Beach? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cal State Long Beach. Um, I did a uh, like a remix of uh, American Boy by Estelle and Kanye West, and it was it was called First Asian Boy, and it was by about why girls should date Asian guys more, and uh, and it was like. It was like it was like really it was like a clever parody like it was funny but it was also like oh bars you know what I'm saying like I was like rapping on that shit so it was the first thing where um out that was getting spread to different uh, just blog sites and that people were really kind of sharing around a lot and that, that people were at school were like oh you're that you're that dude you're that dude from that video you know Asian guys have it the worst with dating girls I mean, in we, my opinion we, we do in terms yeah. of dating girls and that, and that was a big reason why I started um even making content or going into the entertainment business because I felt like. You know, they were so uh, just kind of misrepresented in, like, TV and movies and stuff. And uh, 
And I remember watching TV and being like, man, all I'm seeing, the only Asian guy I've ever seen on TV is like a little, like a nerd or, you know, an, uh, or, a, you know, a karate dude. And I'm like, that's, that's, I'm, I'm neither of those. Keanu Reeves, half Asian. He's half. Appa. I mean, we'll definitely yeah. claim him, yeah. but, <laughs> you know, but I'm like. He's my favorite. <laughs> he's, he's, you know, he's one of my favorites too. He's a too. badass. But I'm like, let me, let me get out there and rep for the, for the Asian guys that aren't, you know, mm -hmm. shy and awkward around. Right, 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 right. You know? Normal Asian guys. Yeah. That aren't uh, we exist. going to UCSD. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that Thai food? Is this this could I could just be like really immature and never get it, but I feel like Thai food's always been around my whole life. Uh -huh. But the last five, maybe maybe ten years, Thai food kind of blew up and is now every chick's favorite kind of food. You know what? Well, here's the thing though: when they say they love Thai food, it's always just like pad Thai. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like... Yeah, it's the basic Thai food. It's the basic Thai food. But still, like, <laughs> I feel like there was a switch. And I think part of it is veg because there's a lot of vegetarian and vegan Thai food, true, too. True, 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 true. But I feel like all of a sudden, <laughs> there was a day where every chick I've ever met was like, I like sushi and Thai food. Those are the foods I like. I, I, I mean, I think... There, that's right, for sure, to an extent, where all of a sudden there was a switch, and then everybody was like, I love Thai food. Then you ask yeah. what time and, and what kind, and they're like, oh, Pad Thai. Yeah. And there's like there's just like a whole world of other Thai shit that just people don't know about. And I try to put them on, you know what I'm saying? Like, Because there's like there's so much more than Pad Thai. It's scary, though, when you see a, a Thai menu at a real Thai place, <laughs> and you don't know what any of it mm -hmm. means. So you don't want to like, you know you like Pad Thai. Yeah. It's hard to be like, okay, I'll try Something I can't even pronounce. Yeah, well, sure. here's here's a tip for uh, if if you love pad thai and you're mm -hmm. you're scared of venturing too far away, there's a dish called pad si yu, which pad is si yu, okay. the same kind of uh, vibe as pad thai. You know, stir fry noodles, meat, and veggies, but it's a different vibe. But it's still fire. It's in that same family. Same in the vein. Pad thai family. Same vein, different vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Pad si another yu. another hot tip. Get it with beef. The pod. That's beef how I like instead it. of. Instead tofu of, or chicken? Yeah, I like yeah, it with the beef. beef. I try not to eat red meat, and that's oh. that's the Hollywood thing that's rubbed off on okay, me. Okay, then chicken's good too. I read, I watched that Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio documentary on Netflix. I I refuse to watch all food documentaries. Smart, because <laughs> if you watch it, you're gonna feel you're gonna hate yourself every time you eat beef. Now every time I eat beef, I feel guilty. I still have the one craving I get is In and Out. Ah, oh. don't you just do the just do the meatless from In and Out? <laughs> nah, that's not that's not In and Out. That's <laughs> I uh, everyone keeps getting me. They keep trying to get me to watch um Sea Spiracy. Oh, I watched that one. Yeah, yeah. No thanks. Yeah, it's if you're if you love fish, which everyone does, I do. It's gonna make you. But you could. There's still so obviously those documentaries go to the far extreme. Yeah, and I still feel like there's a balance. Like if you like fish, just go for farmed fish. You know, or just. I don't even want to ask. Bro. <laughs> I'm just gonna not watch and not ask. <laughs> That's smart. It's better for your own mental health, for I, sure. I love seafood too much. Even growing up in my whole life, I was like, I refuse to watch any of these like um, slaughterhouse documentaries. I'm like, I can't do it, bro. I just want to eat food. Yeah, that's kind of how uh, the... What was it, the guy who ate McDonald's for 30 days? I'm like, but I love McDonald's. I that, don't want to give that up. That made me want to eat McDonald's even more. <laughs> uh, when I watched Super Size Me, I literally was like, I'm going to go get a quarter pounder right now. Because yeah. like... Because it was silly. First of all, he's eating McDonald's. No one eats McDonald's every day. Right. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that was the extreme. Again, all these documentaries go to the extreme. They're yeah. like, yeah, if you ate anything that wasn't healthy for 30 days straight, it's yeah. going to be bad. It doesn't need to be McDonald's. It yeah. could be like Taco Bell. It could be pizza. It could be any microwavable meals from the grocery store. Anything. Anything is going to be bad. It's so true. Yeah, I watched Super Size Me, and I literally ordered like a quarter pounder with cheese like, like the next, <laughs> the, that night, I think. Quarter pounders have gotten better, too. They're so Good, bro. Underrated. People are like, oh, it's, but it's McDonald's. The quarter pounder, now that they use fresh beef, tastes let, like a real burger. That is juicy. Let me tell you something. That new quarter pounder, since they started doing whatever they do to it, mm -hmm. it's fucking next level, dog. It's, it's, it, this is gonna, I'm gonna get some flack for this. <laughs> it competes now with like in and out and Wendy's. It's, it's so good. It's solid. It's like, I, I would be shocked. If you put a quarter pounder in front of someone, didn't tell them what it was, took it out all the McDonald's wrapper, they'd be like, oh, this is a pretty solid burger. I really think so. It's only the, it's the people that, um, the people that know get so excited. Yeah. Because I, like, a, a, a friend of mine made like a list of, 
uh, his top burgers or something currently, and one of them was the the new quarter, quarter pounder, pounder yeah. and people were giving him shit on Twitter, and I'm like, you guys don't know. You don't know, because I because I get it. I used to, when I was a kid, <laughs> I would go get a hamburger from McDonald's, right. and it kind of tastes, it's not like, you could still eat it and it's good, but it tastes almost microwave, you know? You right, could right, tell right, it was right. like, just microwave, heat it up, and it's whatever. Quarter pounder is not like that. I kind of, you know, not gonna lie, maybe because I, I, my parents used to, uh, just buy the frozen like burgers from Costco, um, or like back in the day, McDonald's used to do a um, twenty nine cent hamburger Wednesdays and like a thirty nine cent cheeseburger Sunday situation. Mm-hmm. And we would literally buy like we, we would be like, "What's the max number of hamburgers we can buy?" <laughs> what was what was it? It was like twenty. Okay, and we would take that home, throw them in the freezer or fridge, and I would just be eating like hamburgers all week. You would recook McDonald's hamburgers yes, throughout bro. the week. This was like a part of my childhood. That's not, I've never heard of that. I'm before. talking about. I would take the hamburgers that we put in the fridge. I would take a craft single. And put it on there in the oh, microwave. Oh, you kind of make your own cheeseburger. And I'd make my own shit. And That's so I kind of have innovative. like an affinity for like microwave tasting hamburgers. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. like every once in a while, well, I'm, I'm off cheese, but every once in a while, especially when I was drunk, I'm like, why are you off cheese? Uh, it makes me break out. Okay. Fair um, yeah, and I love cheese. Yeah. But like back in my like drunk days, I was just like, yo, I gotta go to get some double cheeseburgers from McDonald's, and um, it just hits. The spot. Hits the spot that has that childhood nostalgia. Yeah, man. To it. The the closest equivalent I could say to that is when I was in college was was probably my not when I was physically the fattest, but <laughs> when I just ate the fattest because my first time having a little bit of money. Not that I had a lot of money, but I had a job, so I had some of my own money, and I was out on my own. So yeah. no one could. <clears throat> my parents weren't there to make me feel guilty or have food in the house. I could just get whatever I wanted. Mm-hmm. I'd go to In and Out. I get two double doubles, two or, doubles. or uh, what do they call them at, at In and Out? Two, uh, whatever no. the double one, double double doubles. one, double doubles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah double doubles. <laughs> and I would eat one that night, and then I'd put one in my underwear drawer. Okay. And let it just sit there overnight, and I would eat it just warm temperature the next morning for breakfast. Because everything, why wouldn't you just like put it in the fridge and then warm it up? I didn't want it cold. I didn't want to reheat it. So I would just eat it. I would eat it like 12 hours later to let it sit out. Never got sick from it, though. Yeah, I mean. It, I mean, it worked out fine. I think a day. a day. It sounds went, gross. It was great. It doesn't sound too gross. Yeah. Because I actually, I um, I don't mind like cold food, you know. Cause, Neither uh, do I. I worked as a, a server for a few years. And, you know, when you were working your, your server shift, you have to order your food before your shift is up. And then so... But by the time you finish all your tables, your food's always cold. So I kind of got used to, like, cold pasta. I love cold pizza. Yeah. Um, I don't mind uh, cold burgers if it's, yeah. like, you know. If it's good. If it's good food, it's yeah. going to be good cold, too. Yeah. Yeah, as long as it's not frozen. That's I'm, gross. I'm but. down. Yeah, well, I, I like frozen food, too. No, but I mean, like, oh, as long as you're not frozen. Eating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, like, you take a bite in the middle, still, like, partially frozen. You're like, <laughs> Ugh, Ugh. Yeah, that's Like, when you, when you half microwave something. Oh, the Hot Pockets. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. Never frozen get all middle, hot pocket. Yeah. I always go 20 seconds past whatever they tell me to do. Yeah, I feel that. Or you the cut microwave. them in half. I'll cut them in half, throw them in there for another, like, 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, or we could do something like that. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of little tricks. <laughs> a lot of little inside tricks. <laughs> From my perspective, we're going to get to this segment of the show. From my perspective... You're living the dream. You mm-hmm. got you're you're rejecting uh, Wild and Out <laughs> two seasons in a row. You're like, no thanks, Wild and Out. I'm good. Yeah. You're you're killing on the internet. You got a wife. You got a baby. Yeah. You're in love. You're a happy family man. Mm. You look great. You stop eating cheese. Look at your skin. It's baby, a, it's okay. Baby, smooth, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna touch your face. Lick it. No. Do it. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> is there anything wrong in your life? Anything I could help you with? Any issues going on with you? I, I, I could I could tone up a bit. Tone up your body? Yeah. Ah. No, it's all mush under this t-shirt. <laughs> I have that too. I got a dad bod. <laughs> yeah, but you're an actual dad. You're I allowed know. to have a dad bod. And it, it, it's real, the dad bod situation, you know. I mean, I've never really been super toned, but, you know, the, the being a dad for sure, because it's like there's just no time to work out, you know. And then so all you end up doing is like, your arms get a little strong from holding the baby all the time, but then your gut just melts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is that, but you know the issue is just you need to work out more. Yeah, That's yeah, That's all yeah, it is. Yeah, I just need some so more you just activity. Need to find, you just need to get the willpower to wake up an hour earlier and do a morning workout or something uh, like that. That sounds horrible. That sounds so bad. That <laughs> sounds dumb. Uh, <laughs> just another reason I don't want kids. <laughs> I want my dad bod to get even worse. <laughs> I mean, let's see. What else can you help me with? Um... Let's see. The, I got my dad bod. 
Um, you, you know, I, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, mi- I mixed up my schedules. I, I do need an assistant if you, uh, you know. Oh, we can set you up with some assistants. <laughs> Have you tried virtual assistants? No, what's that? There's like, okay, so obviously probably the best scenario, and it sounds like you can afford it, no judgment, but it sounds like you got some money. You could probably just hire a real assistant. But if you want to cheap out, maybe start this way. Okay. You could get like an assistant in India off of a Fiverr type of site. Okay. And they just kind of, your, your virtual remote assistants go through your emails and your calls and get you a little organized on the digital world. Interesting. And they're, you know, the minimum wage there, you could probably get away with paying them, you know, five bucks an hour or something like that. Huh. Rather than the 20 bucks an hour for an in-person LA assistant. I mean, it's it's something to think about. At the end of the day, it's just like, yeah, for sure. Just, I need someone to just keep my schedules in order, you know? But we got it done. You got... You know, second time's a charm. I brought you donuts. Oh, your your wife's Krispy Kreme donuts? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man. I've never, that was the thing. When you were like, my wife made these, in my head, I was like, I've never had a homemade donut before in my entire life. This is going to be a a unique, I was like, I was like, maybe Asian people make donuts (laughs) at their homes. You know what? I've never even thought of that. Do people make donuts at home? I'm sure it's been done, but that's not a common thing because you have to get out the dough, the fryer. It's a lot of work making a donut if you're not set up for it. Yeah, that's true. And there's like a whole glaze situation (laughs) Yeah, I I was like, this is, I was like, he does food on the internet. He's Asian. Like, this is going to be like a Thai donut I'm having here. Oh, man. Krispy Kreme, baby. Just good old Krispy Kreme. Oh, I have one. I'm going to play a voicemail we get. Hey, Ari. This is a, uh, a question. A lot of road that, noise. Uh, you asked your fans if, what, we, what you could do for us to get us to do your super subscriber thing on YouTube. And it might be a little, uh, a little crazy, a little too lofty, but... I can already tell it's going to be too lofty. So I thought either A, uh, some kind of tour thing at the comedy store when I come to LA. I'm a big fan of that place. That would be amazing. Or B, I want to do some drugs, but I don't. I saw your video of how to buy them online, and I don't. I don't do the cryptocurrencies, and I don't use. VPNs or anything like that kind of seems like a pain in the ass, but if I subscribe to your thing, maybe you could help me buy some drugs. I pay for them and everything, but you could just go through that whole process. Might be a lot of work, might not be worth it for you, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Uh, My name is David Taylor. I follow you on Instagram, so let me know. Okay, Um, so he was saying... If he, if I want him to become a super subscriber on YouTube, yeah, he wants me to either give him a tour of the comedy store, okay, or buy him drugs on the internet. Uh, so what you gonna do? Okay, so I would. Okay, if he's in town and I'm in town, I'd be, I'd happy to, I'd be happy to give anyone a tour of the comedy store. I worked there for five years, door, door guy. I love the place. I know the place as good as anyone. I'd be happy to give you a tour. That being said, I don't think I could advertise that I give comedy store tours on my because it's not my business. Like I can't be making money off the comedy store like that. Right. So I can't really say, oh yeah, if you become a super subscriber on YouTube, it includes a tour of the comedy store. Because if the comedy store saw that, they're gonna be like, hey, uh, I don't think this is that cool of a thing to do. And it's so easy to get drugs out here. Well, he wants. I think, so I made this video of teaching people how to buy uh, drugs on the dark web. Okay. (laughs) Well, I taught them how to buy backpacks on the dark web. Right, 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 right. But, so he was saying that it looked too hard, but honestly, going, me doing it for you is just about the same amount of work. It's really not hard. Like in the video, if you go through the steps of getting a VPN <laughs> and cryptocurrency, it isn't hard and it'll be good for you because everyone <laughs> should know how to use a VPN mm-hmm. and use cryptocurrency anyway. So it might sound like a pain in the ass, but it'll. I think it'll be good for you as an adult to learn how to do it. And I don't it'll be even, a lot safer. I don't even do drugs and I could easily get 
drugs if, there you if go. someone wanted yeah. drugs. <laughs> That's a, I don't do drugs either, but I have a safe in my house with a little bit of every drug in it that <laughs> I got on case. the dark web. <laughs> I'm a good host. You know, when someone comes over, you know, I was like, hey, do you want you want some rum? You want some? By the way, can you taste the alcohol in this? I can't even taste the alcohol. A little bit. Barely. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. I can, I can definitely taste the rum. Yeah, yeah. Because rum's kind of sweet, you know? So I taste yeah, like the sweetness of the I rum. I barely taste the rum. And this is my first time having this cocoa yeah, rum. It's tasty. But, uh, yeah, it's tasty. Uh, but yeah, so I keep a little bit of every drug. And the other thing is, I can't be buying dr- drugs for super subscribers on YouTube. That's that's just asking for trouble yeah. with the law. That, yeah, YouTube wouldn't like that either. You t- yeah, YouTube wouldn't like that. <laughs> the law wouldn't like it. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to say um, a soft no to that. Or a hard no. You just lost the super subscriber. Uh, yeah, I lost the super subscriber. And that's okay. That's fine. You know, you can't. Do you have it? Do you do the super subscriber thing on YouTube? No. What is so? How does it's that work? It's basically Patreon, but on YouTube. Oh, but on YouTube, essentially. Okay. So I people see. could. There's tiers they could subscribe to. I see. I see. I see. I on see. YouTube, I don't. I was a anti Patreon. Yeah. For the longest time, I'm like, I don't want to ask people for money. Yeah. And even on, I don't push the super subscriber thing at all. Yeah. But it was just enable super subscribers, so I hit enable. Oh, okay. Whoever wants to do it can do it. Dude, I have a Patreon, but I feel so bad because I totally don't deliver what I promised <laughs> to all my all my Patreon subscribers. I feel bad, and like it's funny because, you know, Patreon. I, I initially did like a little deal with Patreon where because I was like, yeah, I want to do a new show exclusive to Patreon, mm-hmm. where it's like, you know, I already have a travel food show that I do with my boy, but I'm like, I want to switch it up uh, and do something a little different with him, like a different. Uh, travel food show right mm-hmm. but I'm gonna just wanna make it live on Patreon for a bit maybe like I'll release it on YouTube in like a year and then so they're like cool we're gonna give you some like front money to produce your show and then oh that's awesome yeah and then yeah. like and then they would get their money back from you know just the the, the percentages of people who subscribe to your yeah. Patreon yeah so um, but then the, the the COVID happened and we couldn't travel and do the food show anymore so it was just kinda like they had given me this money to do shit, and I couldn't do shit, you know? And then so one, <laughs> so one day, I was, like, checking my Patreon. I was like, oh, you know what? I've never checked, like, my earnings on Patreon. Let me see, like, if I have, like, money to collect or something. And I clicked on my shit, and it's like, oh, negative, like, $7,000. <laughs> that Patreon's just been, like, slowly, like, collecting of the debt that I owe them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, that's how it works. They, they fronted you money, they but they my, get it back. Yeah, yeah. Got yeah. it. And I was like, oh... And okay. that's probably not the most motivating thing for you to say that makes you really want to push for Patreon because <laughs> yes, you're like, well, I owe them seven thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just like, I'm chilling. I'm like, all right, guys. I, if anything, I'll release, uh, I'll release my podcast episodes uh, like a day or two early with, with free of ads, free of nice. all ad reads and I sponsors. I think most people who subscribe, from my perspective, to the super subscriber Patreon, they're real. Most of the time, they're not doing it for the exclusive content. That's a nice perk. They're doing it because they love you, support, and they want to support you, and, 100%. They, and they see that you put in all this work, and you're not, you know, YouTube ads is just not very much. It's so, really not. You yeah. know, it's not what it used to be, especially. Yeah, it's not know? what it used to be, and it's just for the amount of work, especially, and it's also someone like me who has four thousand subscribers. It's definitely it. You know, it's it's pennies, but it's cool. Because we do it for the love. We do it for the love. We do it, we do it because we love attention. Because yeah, yes. I'm mentally ill, and we I do, like yeah. the, and seeing your ten comments below the video <laughs> makes it all worth it. We do it because we're all just really insecure, <laughs> yeah. and we need that little bit of just love and motivation, you mm-hmm. know, to keep us going. A little bit of validation. Is there any experience that you've had? You've been how long have you been in LA for? I'm you, from LA. Oh, you're from here originally. So yeah. your whole life, I didn't even realize. Yeah, your whole yeah. life you've been in LA. Uh, is there anything you've had in this kind of show business game that has where you've kind of messed it up or blown an audition or doing something where you look back and you go, oh, I probably should have done that differently. And even if, not saying you regret it because everything happens for a reason. You've, yeah. you've gone on to do a lot of dope things. But is there any kind of thing where you go, oh, I really fucked that up? You know, I will say this. To, the, to this day, I'm, I'm not a great um, in the room auditioner to be honest you know um like when when you get me like to the, the parts i've been just like offered straight up when we get in there and we're filming everyone's like yo you killed it mm-hmm. like you did great um like even like traditionally this old white dude on this shoot one time was like came out to me he's like you know what when they told me we had a youtuber doing this part i had my doubts but hey you're great you can act and i was like thank you i was so appreciative of that yeah. right because i feel like there's always like a stigma around like a guy coming from youtube and stuff um but i'm not great audition 
auditioning, you know, and um, and for sure there were like auditions in the past where, like, just from inexperience, um, I just kind of wish I would have been more prepared. I'm just I'm not good at, uh, I'm it's not nerve wracking. It's it's nerve wracking, and I'm not a, I'm not a prepared person. <laughs> you feel me? And I'll go in there like to the, like I feel like um. You know, I was always smart in school, but I was I wasn't always. Oh no, I was the opposite in school. Like I I wouldn't pay attention, but I was a good test taker. So it was like obvious. It was like opposite for auditions. Interesting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I know I can do the shit, but when it comes to auditioning, I'm not always like I, I feel like I fumble my words and I come off nervous. Um, like when I auditioned for Wild and Out, luckily, you know, that's like you know we're improvising and yeah. it's like I could you know I was just rapping and like coming up with little fucking like stupid uh, pickup lines or whatever for whatever games we were playing, but. When it comes to scripted stuff, auditioning, I need to improve on that. It's tough. Yeah, I mean, I feel you. I've definitely had, you know, I've had some good ones and some bad ones, but it's one of those things where, number one, it's really hard to be super motivated in auditions because, first off, you have YouTube, so you got your own thing going on. So yeah. it's not like there's there's actors that need this role or right. they don't eat. right. And you don't have that, and I have the same issue. I don't have that because I got stand up and, mm-hmm. and other things. So I'm like, I don't need this role. Would I'd still love it, yeah, but I don't need it. I have other things to fall back on. So right. that's one thing that I think hurts me. Then there's obviously the nervousness because when you know you have the role and you're on set, you got it. You're there. You're gonna do your best. You're gonna do a good job. Exactly. When you're in the room auditioning, you feel all this pressure. You feel you you see the other guys outside waiting to go up that yeah. you're literally competing against. You have these people in the room watching you. Literally, their whole job is to judge you and see if you're good enough. Yeah, and they give you nothing. Even if you're funny, they don't laugh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You could be... Oh, I've heard I've heard of people doing their stand... I've had to do it a couple times, actually, where I had to do my stand-up set for, like, three people in a casting room. God. And I'm like, no, no, that I've done these jokes literally a hundred <laughs> times. They work. You, you just suck. Uh, and this is uncomfortable doing a, a set for you. Man. But, yeah, so it's... Auditioning is a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing, and uh, you know, I like um, it. Just so, if if we were gonna talk about just the just things I I feel like I could have improved on in the past, you know, I wish I would have been more prepared, more memorized. I didn't realize I didn't realize that people were going to auditions completely off book. I didn't know that. I thought like, yeah, I could have my script in my hand, just read the shit, and like, that's just what we did. You know what I'm saying? Until like one day, my agent was like, hey, you should probably memorize a little more. And I was like, oh shit, really? Oh, I had no idea. You know? <laughs> so yeah, I actually have an audition tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> they better L- get off book, but baby. luckily everything is like self tape now. Oh, you're right, right, right. That's um, bad, and that, I think that is better. It has its pros and its cons. Like yeah. it's it's better because, like I said, I'm not great in the room auditioning, mm-hmm. but also you can do as many takes as you want. And I, but that's the thing, I fucking do a hundred of because I'm so just like in my head about right. it. Right, you, know? you put in, yeah, it takes more effort in in that sense of the thing. One time I had this audition, and it was for like a shitty commercial. It paid a few thousand dollars, but yeah. it was. Something I did not care about yeah. at all wasn't a thing that I was dying to get, mm. and didn't prepare at all. Mm-hmm. Went in nothing memorized. Was just gonna read off the prompter. It was like I just don't care. Go in there. My friend, <laughs> someone I knew who I didn't know was like a casting director. I guess on the side, he was just another comedian. Mm. Was the one in the room doing the audition, and I'm thinking like, man, if I had tried at all. I probably would have booked this because right. like he would want to give it to me. He's my friend, oh. but I did n- zero prep, and I'll be honest, I bombed <laughs> that audition so hard. Didn't have anything memorized. Was flubbing lines, looking at it, and I laughed. I go, I know he's my friend, and I know there's no way I got that. Damn. He can't. He can't give that to me. So it it could mess you up. You gotta you gotta try. It's tough. That's what I learned. Yeah, it's tough. Thanks for doing my podcast. Is there Thanks. anything you want to plug? Thanks for having me. I mean, uh, you guys are welcome to watch my podcast, No Chaser Podcast. It's just on my YouTube, YouTube YouTube.com slash Timothy. It's also on all streaming platforms. Timothy, um, that's a good URL. Yeah, I had to write a personal email for that. Really? Yeah. You emailed YouTube and said, can I have <laughs> at slash Timothy? Yeah, because you know, I've been on YouTube for so long. They, uh-huh. you know, they know who I am. And I was yeah. kind of like, uh, I had like a, a contact person at the time. Uh-huh. And I, I checked that URL and no one was using it. So I was like, can I... Can I have this? So they they just you know transferred everything over for me. The power, <laughs> the power of this man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram if you like Tim Chantharanksu. It's just my whole name, and uh, that's it. Awesome! Thank you so much for doing the podcast. Really appreciate you. Thank you for my co- cocoa rum. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>
it another episode of Unlicensed Therapy. Subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Leave a Apple podcast review. Get something from one of our lovely sponsors. Let me know if you did. And uh, yeah, follow the guest. Follow me on social media. You guys know what to do. See you next week. Bye.